A welcome back. A study and findings on what may be the causes of some lingering symptoms experienced by individuals with long COVID has now been published. The study was done by Professor Risha Pretorius from Stellenbosch University's Department of Psychological Science, working with vascular internist Dr. Yaku Lobsha from MediClinic in Stellenbosch. Now, the published study found that an overload of various inflammatory molecules literally trapped inside insoluble microscopic blood clots might be the cause of some of the lingering symptoms that are experienced by individuals with long COVID. Now, to talk to us a little bit more about the significance of these findings in the COVID-19 pandemic study, we are joined by Professor uh, Risha Pretorius, a distinguished professor and chair of the Psychological Science Department at the University of Stellenbosch. Professor, thanks so much for your time. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning, Sakina. So let's just pick up on that. The research indicates that um, uh, this may be an overload of various inflammatory molecules literally trapped inside insoluble microscopic blood clots um, and that this may be the cause of some of these lingering, uh, lingering symptoms experienced by those suffering with long COVID. But what does that mean in layman's terms? So before we, we talk about that, let's just take a step back and just see where it comes from. So we, we know that individuals with acute COVID, that is while you are still infected, have an increased propensity to form blood clots. And these blood clots can go into the lungs. And we know many individuals then also die of these microclots in the lungs. That is the progression of the disease. So in long COVID, we have discovered that these microclots may be persistent and may stay in circulation for longer without breaking down. And we believe that these microclots in circulation are then one of the main causes, not the only one, but one of the main causes we believe that may be uh, causing these persistent and long-term effects of um, feeling unwell and in some cases extremely sick. So, Professor, what are the symptoms uh, presented by an individual with high levels of these uh, molecules that may be trapped in these clots? So symptoms of long COVID can range from anything from uh, brain fog to con uh, issues with concentration to sudden bouts of uh, short breath to heart palpitations and in some cases uh, very um, debilitating uh, effects that these might have where a person cannot work anymore. So uh, very, very importantly is that so in some instances uh, we found that uh, people People cannot even return to work and it seems as if these uh, lingering symptoms can have really um, devastating effects on all of the organ systems, even the major organ systems, the kidneys, the, the lungs, the heart, um, the liver. This has been reported all over um, in, in, in global literature. Um, and 25 to 35% of individuals that recovered from acute COVID will eventually suffer from long COVID. So real uh, a, a dilemma for not only South Africa, but also the global economy. Mm. And of course, uh, it, when you speak to people, I remember we've um, done a few interviews on this show, Professor, uh, with people suffering from a long COVID. And one of the things um, that stands out is that they feel that people don't necessarily understand, people don't empathize. Uh, so as far as the medical field goes, is there sufficient um, evidence around uh, and, and, and also information to make sure that uh, doctors and uh, medical practitioners in general actually understand uh, these symptoms and what it means for those who may be suffering? We must rem remember that this is an extremely new phenotype of um, COVID, of acute COVID. So we are still learning every day and clinicians uh, all over the world were baffled with some of these symptoms. Now the reason for that um, and why people feel that they're not um, properly cared for or heard is mainly because there are no current diagnostic tools for 
um, deciding whether a patient is suffering from long COVID. And this is where our research, I think, plays an important role. Now that we have discovered which molecules are in circulation and the presence of these microclots, as well as dysfunctional platelets, that's the small little molecules uh, sorry, small little cells in your circulation that uh, cause blood clots. Um, now that we discovered these uh, different cellular dysfunctions, as well as the molecules that are trapped in microclots, we now have a possibility for a proper diagnosis. And we have obviously now also the poss possibility to find proper treatments that uh, will, will assist clinicians to both diagnose and treat patients. So just in terms of the study, Professor, um, did you look at the different COVID variants uh, such as Delta, Beta, etc., and uh, or did you just look at one variant? How did you work on that? So we um, basically took samples uh, from individuals who were diagnosed by our clinical collaborator as having long COVID. Um, and we have not specifically looked at a specific variant, although the samples that were collected were in the time of the second wave. Mm. And then, of course, uh, you know, in terms of some of the uh, symptoms that uh, the long COVID uh, survivors experience, um, is there um, some commonality in terms of gender, age, in terms of how these present at all? Um, recently, in, in May of this year, we as um, a research team in the Stellenbosch University launched a long COVID, South African long COVID registry. And from on that registry, individuals suffering from long COVID could report their symptoms as well as their previous comorbidities. And we are currently working with a team of data scientists from Stellenbosch to tease out all the commonalities between the symptoms as well as the comorbidities. However, it seemed to us that one of the important comorbidities that seem to be present in most of these individuals is high blood pressure and then also cardiovascular disease, previous cardiovascular disease, as well as type 2 diabetes. And we also know from um, the acute COVID pandemic that individuals suffering from these cardiovascular conditions, especially type 2 diabetes, are more prone to severe symptoms when they uh, do have acute COVID and land up in, in hospital. Professor Pretorius, one of the other concerns, uh, of course, regarding long COVID is the uncertainty of how long these symptoms will actually last and, and, and the long-term impact on the body after acute infection. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? In some cases, individuals recover fully after they have recovered from acute COVID and are not infectious anymore. Unfortunately, then there's this percentage of individuals that may still have lingering symptoms for a few weeks uh, after they are not infectious anymore. And in some instances, this, these symptoms just persist. And we know of individuals that are complaining of these persistent symptoms from the first wave already, and it's very common. Um, and, th and that is the dilemma, why we need to do something about this condition, um, because it seems to, to us and to some published um, peer-reviewed literature from uh, different other research groups over the world, that in some instances it might become a chronic condition. And that is definitely not what, what we would want to see. We need to, uh, to identify individuals and if, it's a, if there's a possibility for treatment, then we must definitely follow up. Mm. And Professor, people have been worried and wondering about the return of senses such as taste and smell and, and, and how long, you know, that could take to return uh, for those who have suffered uh, acute infection. So are we any clearer at this stage following the research as to how long it should take or could take? That's also a question that, that we cannot answer yet. And in some instances, people, it seems as if it, the, the, the taste and the smell um, in, in, in um, some individuals take very long to return. Um, but hopefully, uh, you know, as the, the, the time progresses, it, it, it will uh, return, we hope. But this is such a, a understudied un, you know, uh, disease and such a new disease that uh, we, we 
simply do not have the answer to that. And, and I'm just wondering, is it possible that your senses in terms of taste and smell could be altered altogether? Uh, that is also a question that, that I cannot answer, simply because the research is not, not, not there. Uh, it might be related to the inflammatory markers that we have found that's trapped inside the microclots. We are currently um, looking at a larger study of 100 non-COVID uh, individuals and 30 healthy individuals. And um, we were um, very, very lucky to, to have a group of uh, individuals from the just the the, the, the um, business fraternity that sponsored this research and currently we are uh, looking into the molecules in these uh, microclots in these individuals to confirm our just published study but also to look for additional molecules that might uh, cause some of the other lingering symptoms that that people complain of and smell and taste as you as you know is all centered in the brain different brain areas that that uh, allows you to smell and to uh, to um, to see and you know all, all your your senses and uh, most probably the answer lies in uh, dysregulated molecules that might be in circulation too. Uh, so that is the next step. We're trying to identify other molecules that might also uh, be causing uh, these um, random symptoms and strange symptoms that, that is unexplained currently. Mm. And, and, and just in terms of uh, some of the symptoms that you mentioned earlier and how debilitating it might be for survivors, uh, thinking about people who cannot return to work, and I know the research is still in its infancy, but when people cannot physically return to work, when they are incapable of performing uh, optimally or performing their functions altogether, uh, in terms of being medically boarded from work, um, is there a case that can be made at this stage uh, that would be scientifically acceptable? I think that is a, a question for uh, perhaps um, another uh, research and uh, uh, individual working on, on that specific um, type of questions. However, from a physiological sciences point of view, uh, I think definitely there's a case to be made if the individual is, is uh, suffering from s such a lot of uh, very debilitating uh, symptoms that they actually cannot function. Some of these individuals cannot walk up a set of stairs. They, you know, they, they are so, some of them are bedridden. Uh, they cannot even get out of bed. So definitely that that's a case to, there's a case to be made for that. Mm. And, and just finally, uh, Professor Pretorius, the registry, of course, documents the extent of long COVID in South Africa. Uh, but does the research also talk to what is happening globally? We are working uh, with various researchers from various countries, uh, not only to, to look for further diagnostic methodologies, um, and, 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 but also for treatment. So definitely we are a global team of researchers working closely together with clinicians, because we as researchers cannot do this work if we do not ha a, have a team of dedicated clinicians that support us with patient samples and with diagnosis and also with just looking after the symptoms and the comorbidities of the patients. So this is definitely not a one-man show. It needs to be a global uh, dilemma that is addressed with by um, you know, global uh, leaders in the field. So definitely we are working with, with many, many individuals. Um, and the WHO as well has now put it on its radar. And uh, so with focus from various uh, organizations and from government, we now also need funding from various funding organizations to assist researchers and clinicians to uh, finalize diagnosis and look into treatment regimes. Mm. And just finally, uh, Professor Pretorius, from a psychological perspective uh, for people who are suffering with long COVID, uh, what is uh, the advice that you would give to them in trying to cope uh, with uh, these debilitating symptoms that very few have any sympathy or any empathy for? 
I think the most important thing is just to hang in there. And um, that's what I, I usually tell all the volunteers who email me regularly and phone me regularly. Just hang in there and be, um, be aware that there are people, there are researchers that's really working day and night to find answers. And we will get answers. I think that's the most important thing. Um, and, and then go to your clinician, discuss your various um, symptoms with them, uh, and hopefully the clinicians will also look into the symptoms that the, the patients complain about and really um, see if, if, if they can also do something about uh, microclotting as well as clotting issues in general and inflammatory um, conditions that these people are suffering from. Professor Risha Pretorius, thank you so much for your time this morning. Uh, Professor Pretorius is from the Department of uh, Psychological Sciences at Stellenbosch University and talking to us there about uh, the breakthrough study and findings on how an overload of various inflammatory molecules are literally trapped inside uh, insoluble uh, microscopic blood clots or microclots as the professor called them and how this might be the cause of some of the lingering symptoms experienced by individuals uh, with long COVID. So that's where we'll park that one. And of course, uh, we are about to get to news time, but just before we get to that, uh, just a quick look at what you can expect on SABC.